So you want me to spend some arbitrary odd amount of gold for a filter for the way I talk? Absolutely not, Steve hissed. Um, well, if you're not interested in spending gold, you can start your adventure today. He pulled out a magical map and handed it to Steve. New adventurers are encouraged to follow our specially catered chain of quests to earn delightful dollars and earn some entry-level gear. Just follow the map and do what the people at each location tell you. Up first is helping the old barkeep clear rats out of the basement. Oh, more rats in basements? Well, that's pretty typical. I've done that a ton. I can probably do it with my eyes closed and still make it look good. Eric bragged for a moment and flipped his hair back and then somehow flipped his hair back on the other side immediately after. Mother f what you are describing is not adventuring. It is a f job. Follow the map and do what you're told, Steve growled and glared at the man over the map. Well, looking to skip the grind and advance quickly? Just trade in your gold for delightful dollars for our advanced platinum premium package. We outfit you with powerful gear and get you into the big fights with demons and dragons right away. He waved a hand at a suit of plate armor that was gleaming and gold with outrageously large pauldrons studded with crystals for some reason. Someone pays you, and you just throw them at dragons without experience, but a suit of armor that's likely entirely too heavy for almost anyone to wear? Steve asked and blinked. Wait, you're offering a way to skip out on adventuring? That, that defeats the point of... He rubbed his eyes then. What are the cosmetics and shit you're talking about? Oh, well, uh, here you can see the cosmetics we have on special armor. Very fashionable armor for any daring and dazzling female adventurer. He stepped back and waved at a mannequin on a pedestal behind him. Sherry, who had been quiet so far, pulled out a dagger. If you suggest that those two tiny teacups connected by gold chain is in any way armor, I will f gut you. She hissed at the man who was now beginning to sweat. N not to your liking? We also have comfortable spellcasting robes available. He gestured to the next mannequin that held a silk robe that somehow seemed to cover everything except what any woman would rather need to have covered for the sake of decency. Sherry just advanced on the man with her dagger a moment. New hair colors, unique titles, custom horse colors. The man held up a hand as Sherry got closer to him. Don't murder him just yet, he's doing his job. Dumb as it is. Steve muttered and looked around once more. So what's the point of this place? It seems like a hub for unusually attractive adventurers. Um, well, yes, this is all part of the Duchess's, uh, Duchess's. Our rulers plan for adventuring as a service. Adventuring is usually hit or miss with big calls for their need, and then it dries up between seasons. So she wanted to provide a place for adventurers from all over to come here instead for more sustained and regular intervals of adventuring content. The man nodded, now slightly less worried about immediate death by angry half-succubus. That's why the Archon told us to come here. This place is messing with the adventuring economy. Steve rubbed his chin and then pointed at the castle. Well, let's go deal with her then. Wait, you can't go in there. The sign says no entry. The man pointed. And I'm an adventurer, I don't give a shit about signs. He snorted and saw the man reach for something in a pocket. Uh, I need an admin with a banham. He started to call out, but Steve grabbed his hand to pull free a rock. That's a magic rock. Security's on the way, the glowing man announced. Larry, Sherry, and Eric glanced at Steve, who looked at the rock a moment and shook his head. Not magic, he announced. Y yes, it is. They told me it is. It's glowing. The man pointed at the rock's very subtle blue glow. Yeah, sure, it glows, but it's not going to tell anyone anything. Steve waved a hand around and no security seemed to show up. Well, guy, I recommend you get a new job very soon. Steve tossed the rock back to the other guy. Well, what are we going to do about the moat or the drawbridge? Eric asked as Steve approached the front of the castle. Steve? But Steve just kept walking off the bridge and through the air. We're not magic, Eric called out, just before Larry and Sherry stepped past him to walk across the air as well. Okay, I'm not magic. Well, I kinda am with the bard stuff, but not that kind of magic. It's an illusion, pun danger, Isher. Sherry explained and kept walking. Eric looked at the moat beneath him and carefully stepped forward. 
Once his foot actually pressed down on a hard surface, he immediately pulled his axe out to strum upon it. Behold the mighty pun Isher. So brave is he that his legends take hold over air itself. Walk forth, my companions, for I shall hold the way. He strummed hard on his axe as the two pretty and two clean adventurers looked his way a moment as he ran across what looked like air. Seriously, Steve muttered as he watched the barbarian sing and strum on his axe as he sprinted across. Once he was through the illusionary draw gate, it was clear the actual castle beyond was far less impressive. The stone was a normal gray. There weren't any massive spindly towers of glass, just a regular squat fort made of stone. Though the door to the central structure was very much real and quite large, so simply opening it wasn't really an option. So, we infiltrate up through the catacombs? Eric asked. No, I don't even know if this place has any. We just... Steve started. Oh, dress up as laundry maids and infiltrate through the servants' quarters. He tried next. No, we just... Steve tried to speak. Oh, classic. We wait for the large cake delivery and... No, shut up, Steve hissed. Large cake delivery? Like that's gonna happen. I just break the door down with magic and then, depending on what we find, kill or maim everyone inside until they do what we tell them. Which is... what? Eric asked next. Uh... Steve blanked for a second and looked to Sherry and Larry and then back. That... she stopped... making... adventuring as a service because it's stupid? Steve the Archon, Sherry reminded him. Right, yes. She reinstate the old rulers or place the Archon in control of the duchy or something. That's why we're here. Steve nodded. Okay, just give me the signal for the door breaking and I'll rush in. Eric swung his axe around a few times and then hummed a moment before singing out a note. K, I'm in key. Steve just frowned and waved his hands before a massive fist appeared in the air and slammed into the door. Just as it did, Eric was running forward and jumping through. Behold the mighty prowess of the legendary Poonisher. Is he gonna take credit for literally everything? Fucking bards? Steve hissed as he quickly rushed in after him. Just inside, he found a group of soldiers standing around, except they didn't have swords or spears in hand. Rather, they had food and drink. Steve looked up and saw some banners in the rafters as well. You're crushing the birthday boy! A woman in black leather armor with a restrained yet still obvious number of skulls upon it cried out. Seriously? How many birthday parties do you host? Steve stepped off the broken door and shoved it aside a little to find the partially crushed body of a soldier beneath it. Larry, I need... But as he looked up, Larry was already trying to smash the female dwarf in heavy plate, yet with a revealing boob window. Heretic, he cried out, bashing his hammer against her holy bubble. Heretic, she cried back. Steve just slapped a hand over his own face as he watched the two. Heretic, bam, heretic, wham, heretic, biff, heretic, baff, fucking clerics. He groaned, shh. He could already see that she was staring at the fallen angel across the room with the black speckled wings and no shirt. My love, I have somehow torn my shirt completely off in another freak accident, the man was saying as he stepped up to the woman in the black leather armor. Must you always rip off your shirts? You do look lovely as ever, but I can only buy you so many silk shirts before it cuts into my wardrobe budget. She huffed. Fine. Steve pulled a potion from his belt, popping the top and stuffing it into the mouth of the crushed soldier. You don't die today, guy. Or, I'm not killing you. Right now. Intentionally. Happy birthday. So, what about the killing and maiming plan? Eric looked back with a bit of confusion. How dare you interrupt this birthday party? The woman yelled out once more. I expect better from you, Stephen. Yes, yes, Duchess Delight, how? He watched her smile grow wide then, and he sighed. I'm not doing it. Ooh, she frowned. p please She gave him a big, bright smile again. How delightful to see you, Steve muttered, and the Duchess jumped a little, giggled and clapped her hands. Oh, how wonderful. Now, I didn't have a fight with another evil adventuring party listed for the day. Did someone reschedule something? She asked. Wait, are we evil? Eric looked at Steve. No, we're not. They're bad. 
he waved at the duchess in black leather armor with skulls. We're smile, she shouted and struck a pose, as did the shirtless fallen angel. The dwarf was too busy smacking Larry to pose and the cat guy. Steve looked around. He didn't see the cat guy. He did see a pale elven lady in strange orange clothes. Smile sounds like a good guy group. Are you sure we're the good guys? Eric confirmed. Yes. Hey, where's your cat guy? Steve waved out. He got turned back into a cat through a magical mishap. The Duchess replied with a shrug. Where's your dog girl? I like that about you, Stephen. Having a girl tank. Very awoken. She nodded. Now your party is... Bit of a sausage fest, isn't it? What? Steve frowned. Awoken? I... I swear I just had this conversation. She was seven feet tall of muscle and obnoxious husky energy. I didn't let her tank. I couldn't stop her from tanking. I didn't have any better candidates than this tool. I didn't pick him. Steve waved at the barbarian. Well, why did he get picked? The Duchess asked. Oh, Larry Love can answer that, honey. Mind if we stop trying to crusade each other, honey? Larry looked to the other dwarf. Well, sugar plum, I suppose we can. I am curious about the hunk of burning bard over there. She blew a kiss at Eric, who tried to duck under it. Well, it's all thanks to this nifty little instrument yours truly invented. You see? Even as the cleric stepped back to summon forth his holy piano, Steve loudly spoke up. It's a stupid sideways harp he worked up that he calls a piano which makes him a pianist. Don't encourage him. He waved his hands. Regardless of all of Larry Love's many haters, he felt the sweet sounds of his piano would mesh well with that of the bard's axe truement. Larry sat down to play a few notes even as Eric strummed. Oh, so he's half bard, half barbarian. The duchess nodded slowly. No, see, I'm all bard. Woo! Eric sang and strummed, but also all barbarian. Ooh! He swung the axe around then. That's, that's stupid. That's bad math. You can't be a hundred percent of two things, Steve pointed out. Sure you can. Just gotta put your heart and your soul into it. What's what makes me legendary? Eric swung his axe around and played it at the same time. That's what makes you an idiot, Steve muttered and then waved at the pale elf. So who's the cat guy replacement? I'm the fearsome. Wah! She spun around and kicked into the air, which somehow made a cracking sound. Emma zone! Bam she! Ah! She opened her mouth wide to sing out a piercing note, then which made Steve wince. But Eric and Larry stopped. Whoa, that sounded great! Eric gasped out. Fucking rotten bard brain, Steve hissed. Emma zone, like, the women warriors? And she's a monk, I'm guessing? So she punches things. The bam she, wow. At least I'm not the only one with the fucking idiotic teammate. Steve muttered. Hold on, you can't be a banshee. You're not dead. Banshees are undead. I might be undeathly challenged, but that's no reason to go throwing around hurtful words. She pointed at Steve. Yeah, Steve be more awoken. The Duchess huffed. What? That's the whole fucking point. They're magic entities, Steve stressed. They can be whatever they want, Emma cried back. No, no they can't. What the? That's like arguing a minotaur could be a gnome. They emphatically cannot. Steve waved his hands around, but then saw the other dwarf pulling out another instrument. No, don't tell me. Bessie Beauty ain't gonna tell you nothing, sugar. She's gonna play it. Cause all you gotta to see is Bessie Beauty busting out her fat bass. She hummed before strumming on the stand-up bass. Those notes you two were playing need just the right sultry smooth undercurrents only Bessie can provide. The fat bass, it's, it's not pronounced like the fish or your fat ass. It's pronounced like bass. Or Voss, Steve hissed. What's a Voss? The Duchess asked with a frown. What? It's a decorative porcelain pot for flowers or shit. Steve shrugged. Oh, you mean a vase? She asked. Fuck no, I don't. I mean a vase. Vase? Fuck. V. A. S. E. Voss. Steve stressed and then pointed at the bombshay who had rolled over a barrel of mead from the birthday party. Oh, what now? I think we got it. Okay, all together. She started drumming, Eric was strumming, Larry played the piano, and Bessie plucked the bass. Steve quickly pulled wool from his belt to stuff into his ears as they all began to play and sing. Wow, that sounds amazing. That's incredible. It's so beautiful. So, 
My ears are bleeding, Steve cried out, rolling around on the floor even as the rest of the room clapped as they finished their little tune. Steve, don't be so dramatic. You're embarrassing me in front of the Celestial. Sherry hissed out at him. My ears are really bleeding, he gasped as he clutched his ears even as they bled. What? Sherry leaned down to pull his hands away and heal him up. You used the steel wool. Fucking steel sheep, Steve hissed and started to climb back to his feet. That was simply the most wonderful thing I have ever heard. The Duchess clapped. I need, I need to take you four on tour. Think of all the money I could make, and I won't owe a cut of it to anyone. I mean, you four, I suppose. We'll sign contracts. I'll manage you all and coordinate. I'm good at that sort of thing. My darling division can help take this all on the road. We'll make stages, set up food and drink vendors, make limited exclusive cloaks and tunics. It's gold. What the hell you will? We still got a fight, Steve gasped as he shook his head to try and shake off the blood from his ears. Oh, right. Why are you here, actually? That was never established. The Duchess stepped up to him. I was sent because... You took over this country violently. You know the rules. No coups, he pointed at her. I didn't take over violently. I was invited to help them make money, she explained. What? Really? The... Archon told me to come here and stop you. Steve squinted, now confused. Ooh, the Archon sent you? She asked. Uh, shit. Steve realized he was never supposed to admit that. I mean, no, I'm here. For my own reasons. It's okay, Steven, your secret is safe with me. Us evils have to stick together, right? I guess I should have known since the Archon trained you that she would be evil. I mean, anyone who would work with Almorans, am I right? She giggled and Steve just rubbed his face and groaned. Not evil, he muttered softly. I'm guessing this is because of my adventuring as a service? Well, that might be messing with the economy, I suppose. But I was paid, you see. The local nations realized adventurers are, well, they're a nuisance. Almost as bad as bards. Eric looked over at that. Oh, not you. Other bards, she assured him. But once he looked away, she shook her head. And, Steve prompted her. Oh, so I realized that it would be best to just round them all up in one place and milk them for all they were worth. They do somehow amass amazing piles of gold and have no idea how to spend it. She shrugged. Hence giving them pointless things to buy with money printed on paper. Ha! Paper money, almost worthless. She giggled. Most of what's out there is just an illusion. Yeah, I figured that out, Steve muttered. Well. Wait, so you didn't kill the prior rulers for this place? No, not this time. They invited me to help get them out of bankruptcy. But forget them, they want a cut. Once I take this new music band out, I'll have it all to myself. For a modest fee from their cuts, I mean, she assured the four. Wait, 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 I don't care? Steve blinked. You can't take them. Larry Love has had enough of you stifling his love magic, baby. Larry Love is going on tour. No more telling Larry Love not to play his heart out when surrounded by lovely elven ladies. Larry returned to playing on his piano. That's because it's always in the middle of a fucking stealth mission in some elf city. You can't be stealthy and then just attend a fucking social party, you knob. I'd do it to keep us from being discovered and killed, damn it, Steve hissed back. Great. So then the music band is a go. Men. The Duchess stood tall. Grab everything we brought. Steal anything worth more than a gold that we didn't bring and we'll march out at once. I'll grab the illusion scrolls as we go and turn them into effects for the shows. We march out to conquer the world through the universal language. Music. The universal language is violence, which I will use. Hey, where are you all going? Steve waved, but all around him the soldiers were quickly getting to work and the Duchess was pulling Eric aside with a paper in her hand. Sign here. Yes, my cut is very modest. 60-40. Split which way? Ha 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 ha. Of course it's what you think. No time for reading the little writing we're off. Steve stood there in a mix of mild shock and confusion as the castle was emptied around him. Sherry standing by his side as they watched the others all grab things and file out. Soon they were left with an old table and a few wood chairs. Fuck, 
was all Steve could say. At least there's the two of us. And I think I technically did what the Archon wanted. However, when he looked at Sherry, he saw a look on her face. Oh no. What? Not more bad news. Steve? She reached out to take his hand. My dad wants me to go back to hell with him for a while. Wet! No! Don't go to hell! He whined. He thinks it's a great time for me to learn the family business. And I kind of think I need a break. Steve gasped. From adventuring, she stressed. Not from you. You go to hell all the time. It's not that bad of a commute. Sure, I go to hell a lot for reagents, but that's just a quick in and out. If you're living in the Soul Palace, it'll be a bitch and a half to see you. Steve sighed. Come on. I just think, with Fenrina and Larry gone, now might be the best time. She gave his hand a squeeze. What am I going to do without you? Without adventuring? Without doom? As usual, there was thunder and lightning, but now it seemed somehow sad. You'll figure it out, Steve. You always do, Sherry assured him. Can't we talk about this? Steve asked. If we do, it'll hurt worse to drag it out. I need to go to hell, and we can still see each other. I'll help you find an easier route to commute. Promise. She leaned in to give him a brief kiss and then backed off and vanished in a puff of hellfire. Steve looked around, suddenly feeling weary as he sat on one of the few remaining wood chairs. Least it can't get worse, he muttered incorrectly. I have a very large cake delivery. A chef was pulling a cart in through the now broken door, a very large cake set upon it. What happened here? I was told to deliver this very large, easy to hide in cake at this precise moment. Damn it. Steve rubbed his temples. Someone has to sign for this. The chef insisted. Buddy, come here. Steve waved him over to sign for the cake. Do you know what happened around here? I think some of the illusions are failing outside. The council invested all their money in this adventuring as a service thing. If it fails, this whole nation will be bankrupt, you know. And whoever is in charge will surely be blamed. The chef nodded as Steve just shook his head and handed the man a gold. Oh, thank you. Glad you didn't try to pay with that paper stuff. It's nearly worthless. Steve looked out from the broken door of the castle as the city in the distance began to look shabbier. The streets looked far shittier. And the smell... Well, the true smell of a city began to build up. Steve was lost for a moment, but finally turned his eyes to the massive cake besides him. Hey, buddy, you ever seen a depressed mage eat an entire cake before? Um, I'm not sure that's physically possible. Well, then, f buckle up because you're in for quite the show. And such was the first death of doom. But Steve's trials were not yet done, for he would soon be subjected to the most hated of all adventuring duties made worse by the lack of his trusted friends and colleagues. For next soon, Steve would be forced to undergo an escort quest. Yet that is a story for another day.